Now, I do know I'm a little late to the game, but I did want to cover this jellyfish UFO. UAP, UFO, I still prefer the term UFO. Now, the reason why I do want to get this out of the way and talk about this jellyfish-like UFO is because I do want to start talking heavily about UFOs and aliens, and perhaps their connection with demons, fallen angels, Nephilim, tulpas, which are thought forms, and things like that. So I still want to continue the conversation of UFOs and aliens, and I do want to start talking about this jellyfish UFO. Now, this unidentified flying object was seen in a video flying over the United States Operation Base in Iraq in 2018. Now, according to Jeremy Corbell, who released this footage, this flying object is named the jellyfish because, of course, it looks like a jellyfish. Now, Jeremy Corbell does indeed have some authenticity to his name because he did release video footage of what is known as the Tic Tac UFO. Now, when it comes to the Tic Tac UFO for years, the government did not get involved whether that video footage was authentic or not. But just recently, they did come out and say, yes, that footage is real. So now we have Corbell coming out again, releasing more footage of unidentified flying objects not just the jellyfish, but also the more recent chandelier. Now, Corbell has stated that the object moved through a sensitive military installation and over a body of water, where it eventually submerged. After around 17 minutes, Corbell said the UAP re-emerged from the water and flew suddenly at a speed far more rapid than what technology could capture on camera. So all they have right now is this little bit of footage and they're also stating that this UAP or UFO of unknown origin displayed transmedium capabilities. Corbell posted on Twitter, the origin, the intent, and the capability of this anomalous aerial vehicle remains unknown. Now, while he does call this a vehicle, he also states this has none of the features of a actual vehicle. The UAP displayed a positive lift. The force holds an aircraft in the air without the typical aerodynamic means for lift and thrust, according to Corbell. The signatures normally associated with propulsion maneuvers were absent. So then, what exactly is this jellyfish-like UFO? Now, there are many theories surrounding this jellyfish UFO, which I will get into, but I do want to talk about my own theory, and again, it's only a theory. And I do want to hear your theories in the comment section below. Now, to get the obvious out of the way, some people are stating that this could be a bird turd. It could be bird dookie. Now, I don't believe this is bird droppings on the camera because as you can see, this is not static. It's staying in one place. It's obviously moving. Now, in my own theory, and like I said, once again, it's my own theory. I don't want anybody to apologize for disagreeing with me because I want to hear your own theories in the comment section below. But when it comes to my own theories, these UFOs, UAPs, aliens, whatever you want to call them, are entities. Now, when I say they're entities, I think they are fallen angels. I think they really are interdimensional entities, and they are what is known as fallen angels. Now, I've touched on this once before, and I've stated that there are multiple different types of angels. So why can't there be multiple different types of fallen angels as well? You have dominions, you have powers, virtues, principalities. And then you have three angels that look less humanoid than the rest. These three angels honestly could look like flying objects or be mistaken for flying objects, UFOs. You have the seraphim, the cherubim, and the thrones. Now, I have spoken about thrones once before because they do look like a mechanical sphere. They look like a mechanical ball. Now, in 2023, April of 2023, the United States Pentagon, they themselves released video footage of a shiny metallic sphere flying over once again Iraq. Now, of course, we don't see those many eyes like the drones have on this shiny metallic orb that's flying over Iraq. But again, we really don't know what this thing looks like up close. So if we are going to say, if we are going to theorize that these are entities and angels can have forms that look like spheres, then maybe fallen angels, maybe demons can also look like spheres as well. And maybe this is indeed what we're looking at. Now, I was browsing the alien section on Reddit and I came across a post that I can't find anymore where a person made a connection with the jellyfish UFO and another 
angel, another fallen angel, that this jellyfish UFO actually resembles the cherubim. Now, I do like this theory a lot because there is some resemblance there. Yes, we're only looking at a shadow. We can't really see what this thing really looks like, but looking at its shadow, it does kind of resemble what a cherubim would look like, what its shadow would look like. Also, again, if we're talking about fallen angels, then perhaps we're looking at a fallen cherubim. This is a distorted, twisted version of the cherubim. When you stop this video at certain frames, some people even state you can see multiple heads. There are even some people on Reddit sketching what they believe they see. Its body looks like it's even surrounded with wings. And again, this could just be me seeing what I want to see, what my mind is trying to see. But other people are seeing the multiple heads as well. And that, of course, falls directly in line with a cherubim type angel. And again, what we're looking at just might be the distorted, twisted version of a fallen cherubim. So on Friday, we had United States lawmakers in the House Oversight Committee who received a classified briefing on UAPs or more commonly known as UFOs. They were debriefed for 90 minutes by the Office of Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. They came out of this meeting. They seemed like they gathered more information than what they previously had, but I did pick up on a few keywords as they were being interviewed. Anna Polina came out and said this. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Grush uses. You know, Grush never said extra terrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. It had a couple other members who were just here who said they were disappointed in what they were bipartisan, a Democrat or Republican. But one member used the term that what they were exploring here were, her phrase, interdimensional beings. Is that something that we're dealing with here potentially? I mean, I think it's easy to be disappointed when you don't get all the information that you want, which I understand. I, I would have loved to receive much more information, but I think, I think that um, it's, it's reasonable to say that uh, everyone that was in the room uh, received probably new information. I, I certainly did, and I think it's an interesting, um, you know, additional information to continue the investigation um, and ask more questions. So definitely have more questions than, than less does questions. That, does that term mean anything to you? I'm not going to get into any any terms. I just think that it's more important to focus on that. There's this is a serious topic and it deserves um, serious attention. And I actually encourage also members of the media to continue covering this topic. So it was once believed that these things did come from outer space. They were vehicles from other planets. But now we have lawmakers talking about other dimensions, interdimensional. That can even mean anything. It can mean a dimension lower than ours. It can mean a dimension higher than ours. A dimension that has mastered our laws and physics of the 3D world. But it could also mean a spiritual realm, a spiritual dimension. It could mean hell, it could mean heaven. So yes, while these could easily be fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional creatures, we can't exactly take off the table that these beings could be coming straight from hell. Aleister Crowley, through his dark, twisted sex magic known as the Amalanthra, was able to summon an entity from another dimension known as Lamb. In his day and age, there was no such thing as greys. There was no such thing as aliens that, to describe these creatures. So what he described Lamb to be was a demon. He passed these rituals on to L. Ron Hubbard, Jack Parsons, even to Walt Disney. And these workings became known as the Babylon workings. In the very early 1940s, you had Jack Parsons, the father of jet propulsion, and you have L. Ron Hubbard, the father of Scientology, go into the desert and perform these rituals, this Babylon working. It was a desert in New Mexico. And then a little while after, we have the Roswell, New Mexico incident, where a UFO crashed in Roswell. As the 1940s progressed, there was just an explosion of UFO sightings, even during World War II. So while many rituals are still being performed today, we still see many of these rituals being carried out in places like a certain grove in California. With time and technology, maybe they no longer need these rituals to bring these entities over. Things like CERN, could be opening up portals to these dimensions, bringing these entities, these fallen angels over to our dimension. These lawmakers, these congressmen were very excited to bring this news to the public. They stated it's our American right to know about the existence of UFOs and aliens. Then they have this 90 minute debriefing and they come out with a little bit more of a different tune. You even have one lawmaker say that this could be a 
national security issue. And when he said that, that kind of reminded me of Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter pretty much ran his presidency. Well, one of the topics anyway that Jimmy Carter ran his presidency on was releasing information about UFOs and aliens to the public. He wins the presidency, he tells the public, I am going to release information about UFOs and aliens. The CIA approached Jimmy Carter. They say, I don't think that's a good idea because what we have to tell you can pretty much put humanity on its head. It could cause chaos. The CIA tells Jimmy Carter, what you think are UFOs, what you think are vehicles, what you think are creatures from outer space, they are our gods, they created us. These beings come from another dimension. Not only did they create us, but they also created religion as well for reasons as to bringing peace on earth. Jimmy Carter broke down, he sobbed because he is a heavily religious man. And then when he's asked in an interview about UFOs and aliens, one of his campaign promises, he said he can't talk about it because it's a national security issue. And he stopped speaking about UFOs and aliens. He did not talk about them anymore. And we are talking about a man who made this campaign promise because he, among others, he was with a group of people saw a UFO in the sky. So if these entities are playing with our government and our government are playing with these entities and our government fully knows what these entities are, that these entities are telling them that they are our gods, that they created religion, that does indeed sound like something a fallen angel would say. That does sound something like a liar would say. Or maybe they really do believe they created us. Maybe they do believe they are the gods because they created the Nephilim. And maybe they had some sort of way in manipulating the human DNA code. So they feel they are the true gods of this earth. You even have some news agencies say that these same congressmen really want to get the truth out there. And now they're acting a little bit more secretive. So seeing these lawmakers act more secretive, it definitely brings me back to that Jimmy Carter story. And I can definitely see fallen angels believing they are gods and deceiving humanity. So then why don't these fallen angels just come out to the public? Why don't they just come out to all of humanity to say they are God to deceive all of humanity? We don't know the kind of deals that these fallen beings, these entities have with our governments, with our leaders. These entities could be coming over in ritualistic ways. They could be coming over with things like CERN, with AI, we don't know. In exchange for them coming over here in ritualistic ways, they give leaders, they give government technologies. As a part of that deal, they're willing to stay a secret. You have to ask yourself, what is the big secret behind these entities? You had David Grush back up by Congressman State that people are getting hurt. They are being violently attacked, physically attacked for trying to release this information. So I could see them potentially hiding information that is potentially earth shattering because you still have many people across the world that are still deeply religious. That would cause a lot of problems across the world if governments came out and said, these beings, they are not vehicles. They are our creators and they created all of religion. Now, of course, this would be a lie because these governments are also being deceived by these fallen beings. But many people hearing the government say this, that would cause a lot of problems across the world especially with people who are deeply religious. So taking a look at this jellyfish UFO, it screams to me that it is some sort of fallen angel, like I said, a fallen cherubim. But again, like I said, that's what I see. I do want to know what you see. Do you also see a fallen cherubim? Do you see a person with jetpack technology? Do you see bird dookie? Please do comment below. In any case, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.